the United Street Public Library. Uh, my name is Pam. I'm the branch in here. And today we have a very special presentation in honor and recognition of Black History Month. And actually, I should be saying that we're on the land of the um, Native peoples who lived here because we should all start saying that. I have never been doing that, but I think I need to start doing that. In, because um, First Nations people have a lot to teach us, especially in terms of climate change and what we're doing to our planet. So today we have a special th a presentation about Nelson Mandela, and our presenter is Sean Frost. Sean um, started coming to this branch a while ago. Am I talking about your how we met? Okay. So Sean was um, on parole. He living in the Keele Correctional Center and started coming to the library to use the library and. Um, he was here a lot, we get to know each other, and um, we became friends. But Sean is a very, to me, inspirational person because he, he made a mistake when he was young and he had to pay a big price for that mistake and be in prison for a number of years. But he uh, realized that that wasn't the path he wanted to be on in life and has managed to change his path. He went back to school and he's now uh, set up uh, his own foundation and is working with other organizations to speak to youth and help them not make the wrong choices and learn from his mistakes so they don't have to make the same mistakes and be an inspiration to all of us. So I'd like to present Sean and um, turn it over to Sean today. And thank you all for coming. Amanda. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Lizzie Mahashe, and right now I'm going to disappear and give the Thank you to my. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Uh, I would like to first acknowledge the Toronto Public Library uh, for their support and their uh, continued help in my life since 2012. Like Pam said, I came into this library with. Uh, hope with uh, dreams and with big, big ideas of a business I wanted to start, a book I wanted to write, a movie I wanted to film, all these different things. And as soon as I walked in this door, I was embraced by all the staff. They helped me do my taxes. They helped me register for university. They helped me not just find books on the shelf. And I want everyone to understand that the library does a lot more than just help people find books, you know? They can help you with a lot of resources, internet, not just the internet, but even learning how to search the internet. Because when I first came home, I was 10 years behind in technology. I didn't know nothing about Facebook. I didn't know nothing about Microsoft. I didn't know nothing, so when I came home, it was very, very frightening and very, very nerve-wracking, but thanks to the people here, they supported me all the way, and I'm 100% thank you. Uh, so today, as you guys know, we're here to celebrate Black History Month, but more importantly, uh, I want to focus on Nelson Mandela. He himself has been an inspiration in many people's lives, but in my own, he's been the number one when it comes to looking outside the box and looking for inspiration from other people who are successful. He spent a numerous amount of years in prison for his ideology and his beliefs, and he was able to turn that negative and that time in prison into something positive, and I think that I'm trying to live a parallel life to that. So, Nelson Mandela, he was born in the Madiba clan in South Africa in the village of Wavizzo. Uh, it's in the Transki on July 18th, 1918. His mother and his father were, 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 were very, very inspirational in his life. His dad was the leader of a uh, clan, so as a result, Nelson Mandela was more of a prince. He was born a prince and he died a king. So, you know, 
Growing up, he attended school, you know, he was given a Christian name, that's how he came up with the name Nelson. His African name is Roli Fafa. That's uh, his given name in his tribe. I myself am South African, and I have a given name to a tribe. My tribe is the Basutu tribe, and my name is Tsepo. That's my African name. So Nelson Mandela grew up following in his father's footsteps as a child. He was trained. He went through numerous rituals that young boys go through in his clan, and he wanted to set himself aside from everyone else and attend law school. Nelson Mandela attended law school and became a lawyer, which was very rare in South Africa around those times due to the fact that racial segregation was at an all-time high. And today, the number one word that we're gonna talk about is apartheid. And what apartheid means, it means separation. And if you guys are familiar with the First Nations, as Pam was talking about, the structure for apartheid was the same structure they used for the residential schools here in Canada and the First Nations people. Uh, the South African blacks were segregated in their own villages and their own ghettos, and they were given a pass, which is called the pass system. And in Canada, they did the exact same thing to the First Native, I mean, sorry, the First Nation. So now, as this is going on in South Africa, there's a lot of political divide. And today, we are blessed to be able to be in the presence of somebody who actually fought in that war. And when my aunt introduced herself, she only touched on the surface, but later you're going to hear more about her life and the fact that she was actually involved in the fighting and her childhood was not like our childhood. Her childhood was a childhood of, uh, let's just say, unpredictable events that most children don't have to go through. So in our culture, when people are down on emotion or when things are going right in their lives, what we turn to is music. And we use music as a form of celebration, but also a form of therapy. So today, we're gonna start with a song from South Africa by my lovely aunt Lizzie Mahashe, and it's called Tulan. So everyone give a big round of applause for my uncle Lizzie.
became more involved in politics. In 1942, he joined the African National Congress. And in 1944, he helped join the Youth League, which is a youth branch of the ANC. And the youth branch of the ANC was one of the forces, military forces, that was, 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 was created in desperation for survival. I think that my aunt and all of her teenage friends going through high school, just imagine that you're going to high school and all of a sudden your life's ripped up from under you and you're told to hear, here's a pass, this is no longer your country, you have to live over there. Uh, so as the political tension grew, his involvement in politics became more serious and more radical. He rose through the ranks of the ANC very, very fast based on his radical approach and the program of action in 1949. In 1952, he was chosen as the National Volunteer in Chief of the Defiance Campaign. This campaign of civil disobedience against six unjust laws was a joint program between the ANC and the South African Indian Congress. He and 19 others were charged under the suppression of the Communist Act for their part in this uprising. And he was sentenced to nine months hard labor and that sentence was suspended for two years. So, as he became more radicalized in his beliefs and his fight for what he thought was right, <coughs> the government became more radical in their approach to deal with it. And as you'll hear from my aunt later, the African people weren't willing to go down without a fight. So once they form these youth, let's just say, battalions, they ended up fighting back. And there's a famous incident that happened where a numerous amount of kids were shot and killed. It's probably the biggest turning point in the apartheid movement. So now he became banned. His radicalized movements became banned by the government. And at the end of 1952, he was basically banned from publicly expressing his political beliefs. So again, he was on the run now based on the fact that the government realized that he was a threat and people were mobilizing under him to a point where Molotov cocktails, firearms, not just rocks no more were being used to defend their own land. And as a result, he was arrested again in a countrywide police swoop on December 5th, 1955, which led to the 1956 treason trial. That's the famous trial where him and a, new, a number of other men were arrested and swooped up for their beliefs. So on March 21st, 1960, Sorry, 1960, yeah, 1960. That was the day I told you about the shooting. It was 69 unarmed men actually who were shot and killed in a protest in Sharpeville. And it's, to this day, it's famous. If you go on the internet, you'll, you'll see that. If there was one incident that sparked the apartheid to another level, it was that incident, that shooting. That's when I think the world began to watch and the world began to realize that something needed to be done. And as a result, once other countries' influence became imposed on the, I mean, the uh, South African government, they just went around and swooped up all the leaders, all the black ANC leaders, anyone who had any clout, any pull, they went to jail. So now while he's in jail, you know, he ended up marrying a social worker, and her name was Winnie. She's his ex-wife, but she's famous. Everyone knows Winnie Mandela. That was his love of his life, which in the end, 
they ended up getting divorced, but they always did keep a strong, strong relationship. And I think as a result of everything that Nelson Mandela went through, I can see so many parallels in my own life. And that's why I'm so inspired by the man and what he went through to get to where he was at today because after doing that many years in prison, I don't know anyone, anyone, I don't know, anyone would not be, could not be impressed by what he went through and be inspired. And I think in life, Everybody needs to be inspired by something or someone, whether it's a friend, whether it's a mentor, whether it's a teacher, whether it's, hey, sometimes they're negative. Everyone's inspired by something. And me, Nelson Mandela is what inspires me. So, Nelson Mandela, as a result of this trial, he was sentenced to 27 years in prison. He wasn't sentenced to 27 years, he was sentenced to life. But, in that life sentence, the apartheid movement, like I said, started to gain light. And after he went to prison, it died down. It died down, it died down a lot. So now my aunt and all the children's soldiers started to flee. That's where a number of South African refugees ended up in Canada. And I am blessed to say I am South African and my family are survivors of that movement. So, after Nelson Mandela went to prison, he basically was in there and was treated very, very unjust at first. Because of who he was, he wasn't allowed mail, he wasn't allowed no correspondence, he wasn't allowed to talk to his wife. He went five years without speaking to his wife, not allowed no contact with nobody. But he was able to devise series of connections inside the prison that would allow him to send correspondence to his wife. And he ended up getting caught for that, and he was sentenced to numerous more years in segregation. So as he's in prison, the ANC movement didn't die, and the apartheid fight didn't die. So I already said earlier that our culture, what we use is music. We use it for therapy. We use it for learning. When my mom was a child, they didn't really have pens and papers. They were poor, so they would use song and rhythm to learn the mathematics, timetable, to learn the alphabet, things like that. What you heard earlier was a song, a cry for freedom. That song was written by my lovely aunt, and every word in that is true. Every word in that is raw emotion of what not just herself but numerous and many South African blacks went through. So once again I tell you that Nelson Mandela is not only a sign of inspiration and his life is not only today going to be critiqued, it's going to be celebrated and it's going to be celebrated for what he went through. So once again, I would like to introduce, reintroduce my aunt. Thank you. Thank you, I would like to say something before I sing. Like, as he said, to continue where he left off about me, I am one off. Oh, yeah, that was about 50 years ago. I was one off. I was 13 when I was exiled. At that time, I was just out of incarceration at age 13 for being black, for saying Amanda, for fighting for my freedom. My mother went through a lot to get me out. But here's a kicker. How do you give a 13-year-old a pink slip to report to the police station every three hours, knowing the distance between the police station and her home. So I didn't have a chance to sleep home. If I leave at nine to report at 12, 
One, two, three, I have to be there. Four, five, six, I have to be there. Seven, eight, nine, I have to be there. So somebody came to me and said, you need to get up. I was 13. And I did. But the good part is, in all that, I learned a lot outside exile. And here in Canada, I met uh, Dada himself, which is after I think I made a mess of things. And uh, they kind of told him that I messed up. And he came here in um, 1998, the Skyro. I was supposed to perform. They said, no, you're not performing. He looked for me. He looked for the troublemaker. He said, where's my troublemaker? He was here at dinner. So he said, you're a troublemaker. I said, what did I do? Somebody messed up somewhere. I'm not going to go into details, but the bottom line is that he said to me, if you believe that you're fighting for is just kick your butts. With my music career, I went, you know what? Dad is right, I'm going to kick some butt. Let's celebrate. <laughs> Dance with me. <laughs> this song was written after the independence of South Africa. This is uh, my second album, titled Celebrate the Birth of a New Baby, South Africa. You ready? How about everybody? After all those years in prison, on August 12, 1988, Nelson Mandela was taken to hospital and he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. So after more than three months in the hospital, he was transferred on December 7, 1988 to a house at Vector Prison near Par, where he spent his last 14 months of his imprisonment. He was released from the gates on Sunday, February 11, 1990. Nine days after the banning of the ANC and the PAC and nearly four months after the release of his remaining Ravonia comrades. Throughout his imprisonment, he had rejected at least three conditional offers of release. But he refused to go against his values and he refused to break and he refused to be released under the conditions and the terms that they wanted him to. Three times. But finally, he was released. And it was a spectacle all over the world. I don't know if you guys remember, but 27 years before when he went to prison, the spectacle wasn't as big. But the most influential part of his life that touches me personally is the fact that he was able to be incarcerated for so long and still come out and do something huge. He became the president of South Africa, the president of a country that locked him up for 27 years. That is a miracle. That is living proof that you can do anything that you want to in this world. And it was living proof to me. I read his autobiography 
front to back three or four times. I learned and I, try, I, I keep trying to learn from people who are influential like Nelson Mandela, you know, Russell Simmons, there's a whole bunch of other people who we can get into detail what it's not about, but that's the key part is being able to be inspired, like I said earlier, by someone or something. And especially the fact that he was incarcerated, that's what touches me more because I was incarcerated myself for a period of 10 years. If I look at his life and I look at mine, I realize that I'm not going to be the Prime Minister of Canada, but I choose not to be. <laughs> but I can use my own life experiences like he has and use that as a tool to touch other people in hopes that they don't make the same mistakes I did. And I feel like if I live according to the values that I had since a child, I'll be fine. Because it wasn't the values and stuff that I was raised upon that made me make mistakes. It was the environment and the people I associated with. I came from a strong, strong African-loving home where I was loved. I have many aunts and uncles, like I told you earlier. I have many cousins. I have many people who were good, loving, members and who supported me through the whole incarceration and like Nelson Mandela he had a whole country of black people to support him I had a whole tribe of family to support me so I just wanted to thank you guys for taking the time to let me share my experiences and my parallels with Nelson Mandela's life and give me the opportunity to showcase his life and my aunt's wonderful, wonderful singing. You forgot something that we were going to teach them, what Amanda means. Yes. Does anybody know? I, has anyone heard that chant before? I, you have. Amanda. Can you say Amanda? Amanda. 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 Amanda means power. Amanda! Amanda! Let me hear you. Come on. Amanda! Amanda! Yes. Power to the people. Ngawe to power is ours. Amanda! Amanda! Can you answer? Ngawe to Gawe to Amanda! Gawe to 